Greetings from Modern Steve Tea Company. My name is Christopher. We often get asked, how do we prepare matcha? So while a written explanation might be great, sometimes it's just easier to see it done. So grab a cup of tea, sit back, and watch as I share just a few tips so that you can enjoy whisking up your own bowl of creamy, delicious, healthful matcha for yourself. For this example, I'm gonna make about a six to eight ounce serving. Of course, you should feel free to add or subtract an ounce or two of water to suit your own taste, depending on how strong you'd like your matcha to be. Now let's take a brief look at some of the tools we'll be using in the process. When making matcha for just myself, I like to use this eight ounce ceramic matcha bowl, or chawa, in Japanese. But for the demonstration, I'm gonna use a slightly larger bowl that will allow you to better see the preparation. I'll be using a bamboo whisk, or a chazu in Japanese. This is the most traditional tool used for making a matcha, but you might choose to use something else such as an electric milk frother or a small immersion blender, whatever suits your taste. Now before I whisk my matcha, I'm gonna run it through a sifter, just a simple kitchen sifter, much like I would do if I was baking and using confectioner sugar to eliminate clumps, but this is certainly an optional step. Now to measure out my matcha, I'm gonna use a one half teaspoon, slightly heaping scoop. This will yield about one gram of matcha or enough to make that perfect six to eight ounce cup. A more traditional tool used to measure out matcha would be the bamboo scoop. Lastly, I've heated some water to about 175 degrees Fahrenheit. I think the optimal temperature for making matcha is about 160 to 180 degrees. Again, you can try different methods and see what works best for you. Now let's move on to actually making that cup of matcha that we want to, want to enjoy. So I'll start by measuring out my matcha using that half teaspoon, and I will make just a slightly heaping scoop as such. Put it in my sifter, run it through just a few seconds here, and it'll be just as fine as the day it was ground for us. And then I'll add just a few ounces, first two or three ounces of water. Again, using 175 degrees for the demonstration today. And I'll start with whisking. I'll get some on the sides of the bowl that I'll try to pull off with the with the whisk. And ideally, you're not scraping the bottom of the bowl with your whisk. Once you pull the matcha from the bottom of the bowl, it's ideal if your whisk is really in the middle of the water towards near the surface of the water to get the best creamy foam without a lot of large bubbles appearing. And you don't want to spin in a circular routine. You want to whisk using, let's say, a W or an M pattern, zigzagging back and forth, uh, because ultimately you're not trying to stir this up, you're just trying to suspend the matcha powder in the water. And there's no set time limit, it's just when you're satisfied with the creaminess of the matcha that you're preparing, that's when it's time to stop. So there we go, we have a nice little froth built up there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that water, going around the sides and we'll get my bowl and take care of that little bit that's left in the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to top it off with just that last ounce or so of water and done. Uh, 